yeah. when your program helps me like get over shit like that it's still there like it lingers forever yeah. but with your like mindset goals and shit like that you sort of yeah you're able to i think like so you got you pulled the stripper that girl that we have on the infield she was probably yeah. like eight five nine one of the one of the other students thought she was the hottest chick in the venue yeah. probably, probably, like, she was pretty, probably yeah. about like a thousand people and a bit of a belly All right, what's up, everybody? This is John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today we have Anthony. It's a oh. spelling of Anthony. There's no H. Yeah, it's spell. Anthony. Uh, he's in London, United Kingdom. Uh, he just took a program. Was it like two weeks? Two weeks ago? Mm -hmm, something like that. Two weeks ago in London. Um, he came on the program. How many girls did you approach prior to the program? About three, maybe five. Not a lot. Okay, you walked up. You, I almost said you walked up. First of all, first, <laughs> first, first of all, uh, he was born in a wheelchair. We'll, we'll have him give his give his background here. It's uh -huh. really cool. He wanted to come on and, and share his boot camp experience, and and I really wanted to uh, make the point here, like he was very successful on the program, and it was it was a pretty life changing experience. So all the, for all these guys that say they're handicapped at, for their ethnicity, like oh I'm Asian or Indian, so I can't get girls, or because of their height, I'm too short to get girls. Or I live in such country or or whatever. I don't speak perfect English. This dude is literally handicapped since birth in a wheelchair, and he was able to pull a stripper on program, and he was able to make out with a chick and grab her titties. And we, I was recording uh, some infield. And we're gonna show those clips. Um, I'll probably pop it up during this video and the edits, and also uh, show the full clip at some point in the video. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll let him give his. Oh, but, okay. So you would only cold approach up to like five chicks total in your lifetime you mm -hmm. had like extreme approach anxiety you were telling yeah, me at the beginning of the program yeah, yeah. um how old are you uh 23 23 now yeah three old okay and you were ready to give up on on pickup and cold approach and like yeah, you just, yeah. i was just you were, like fuck this and you were yeah. i think you, you're cool with us putting this out there like you were uh a virgin when you came on the program yeah yeah so he was okay so you were like pretty much brand new to cold approach but you had watched yeah different theory videos online and, and you yeah. wanted to take program well here I'll let, I'll let you explain all this but so what would you want to give like your background first like where you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you well i'm from london obviously and i've always been in london so i was born in a wheelchair i have um cerebral palsy which is to do with like oxygen deprivation so basically i didn't get enough oxygen when i was a baby and shit like that so yeah and um so you've yeah. never you were born like handicapped from birth you were never yeah You've never so I never, walk. yeah, I never have to walk around like that. But it's more like the nuanced stuff that gets in in your way, like the other stuff that comes along with walking, rather than the walking itself, which bothers you, you know, socially. So what do you I mean? was quite, I don't know, like obviously social people, you become ostracized, and then your uh, your um, your anxiety becomes worse and shit like that. Yeah. But your program helps me like get over shit like that. It's still there, like lingers forever. Yeah. But with your like mindset goals and shit like that, you sort of yeah, you're able to. I think like so you got you pulled the stripper, that girl that we have on the infield. She was probably yeah. like eight five nine. One of the one of the other students thought she was the hottest chick in the yeah. venue. Yeah, probably out of like she was probably, pretty, probably yeah. about like a thousand people. Had a bit of a belly though. Yeah, slight, yeah, slight old. belly, but she had nice tits yeah. and ass that yeah. you grabbed. And yeah. <laughs> you had, how many how many phone numbers did you get on the program over three days? You got. I think I got at least. At least like eleven, I think. Okay. I think six every, but I might have got more, but I kept losing them because I'm a bit. <laughs> I kept fucking losing them because I didn't put it in the right way. Yeah. Oh that's yeah. My... yeah. Oh, that's fun. You had some of them written down, and you were mm, you weren't sad. you were mixing up some of the girls and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what I was yeah. Yeah. No, it was cool. You had a you had a really like, perfect view, like when you were like going through the the venues, you were like yeah. fucking eye level with all the asses and shit. <laughs> nah, yeah. we're 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 yeah. having you like block <laughs> block moving sets and shit with the chair yeah, <laughs> yeah so okay so describe like you, like you had watched some pickup videos you told me um mm -hmm. you had watched some i think rsd stuff and some other yeah why did people. what like turned you on to my stuff what why did you think that my stuff was legitimate yeah 
Well, originally, like I said before, originally I was a bit skeptical, but then I started looking properly at it and the way that you come at it so methodically, and it's like a video game. So you do this part, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like a combo sequence. So if you do this, you get this, and it's just so uh, uh, replicable for everyone. Like you can be retarded, like literally retarded, and you still can do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. no point intended, but it's just mad. Yes, yes, very, yeah, I designed it to be like very systematic, very mm. practical, very straightforward. Because most mm. pickup theory out there, like when you are watching other pickup videos besides my own, like, did you find that there was just a lot of like woo woo shit, abstract shit? Plus, like, yeah. after you watch the video, like, RST puts out these like hour, hour or more long videos. And then at the end, you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, yeah. Kind of I mean, originally. Good, but you don't, you didn't really learn anything. Yeah, yeah, you get like sensory spikes sort of thing you feel accomplished but then you walk away and you've not actually done shit it's like what the fuck but um originally they were decent i mean julian like you said before originally years and years ago yeah. they brought us some good stuff but then it just slowly turned into some marketing scheme yeah. whereas with you i mean i think it took about an hour to get through the material and then when we was out in the field doing it there was no bullshit there was no on the first night yeah your mindset yeah. thing yeah yeah on the first night yeah yeah. Like to get through the material took about an hour. Yep. Yeah, that's that's usually the case. Is like, like guys come on, they think like, oh, this is really all there is to it, and then they go and start implementing it, and it it just blows their mind. Um. So did you want to did you want to talk about like, um, kind of like your big uh, epiphanies on the program? Like, what was like the big life changing things for you? Well, it was just it's the fact that when you do it as well, like you don't expect it to be as simple as like, like you said. And then you do certain things, and it just happens. Because yeah. you can see, you can see it on the rise as well. When like the rise, like, like you physically see the attraction being built. I'm on the phone. Who's that? I'm on the phone. Yeah, sorry. You can physically see the attraction being built up. It's just mad. Yeah. And stuff like that. And obviously, if you go for it methodically, like you're open, then you do the logistics, and you you know cement your value and things like that. It's just there's no bullshit. There's no yeah, and you you went from like being terrified to approach to like you were you were able to like approach almost anyone in the venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And you were like, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know what it is because I still have some sort of anxiety. It doesn't go away, but it's just like you kind of just don't allow your brain to trick yourself. Yeah. And yeah. Even even, even at an advanced level, even after a thousand chicks, I still feel it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that kind of never goes away, but you just yeah, learn yeah. to not give a shit about it. And you were just like, when you were saying like you're hundred percent, you're just you just fucking yeah, going. Cementary value is being top. That was like <laughs> a turning point for me. Yeah. In terms of like, in terms of like the other pickup stuff, where they're trying to convince the girl, or yeah, they're yeah. trying to persuade, or they're spending like hours in set when she has a boyfriend. Yeah. Remember one time you kicked my wheelchair because you was like fucking. She said she has a boyfriend. Like, move on. You know. Yeah, yeah, because you're yeah you're trying to like go for the highest probability moves in, yeah, in that situation. Yeah, I, yeah. The chick was like, my boyfriend wouldn't let me meet, and you were like, oh maybe we can just meet his friends or you know. But it's like the, the odds of her fucking are just low. Mm. Um, but yeah, I I thought it was just really a waste cool. Of time, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Like you were able to like very quickly, and this happens with lots of the clients. But the fact that you had like almost no approaches before that, um, you were able to very quickly start fearlessly going into the sets um mm. you were like upper closing you're able to escalate you're isolating yeah. chicks you had chicks dancing on you in the chair yeah yeah man i mean your stuff so easy uh easy to implement so it's just it's really easy to do and i'm not a stupid person so i understand it theoretically yeah, yeah. it was just physically doing it and you kind of went to the other the extreme the, the approach anxiety stuff you started saying like because after you after like i think i told you before we went out the first night i was like for the rest of your life, no more fucking pussying out when you feel scared about to approach. And then, like, I, I went up to you during the night, and, and you're like, fuck it. Like, I'm not going to yeah. ever be scared again. Like, I'm not. Because I'm, I, I asked, remember, I asked all I the students. I think that was one of the biggest epiphanies. Yeah, I asked, all the, like... I asked all the students in the beginning of the first night. I said, how often do you, or out of 10 girls, how many will you, like, have the balls to approach? And everyone was saying, like, three or four or less. And I was like, start having the balls to approach all ten. And then, when you when you change your mindset like that, then yeah. your results go it's way up. It's just a switch, and especially when you realize the amount of volume you have to get. I mean, you're honest and say that it's ten percent closing rate. 
with all the you know volume that you've got. So you've not got time to be pussying up. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know I mean, it's not even an option. Yeah, if you only do like a couple interactions in a night, like you're just setting yourself way back. Mm -hmm. So when what? you realize that, and you realize, and you know what I mean, yeah. your only option is to fucking go for it. Yeah. What about I want to because I'm gonna put up the infield clip. So the mm -hmm. the chick the chick in the black dress like I remember you I can't, I always say rolled up like even for people that walk but it was funny because I I kept uh, so saying that I didn't care about semantics I'm not PC I don't but you, no but you you rolled up on this chick <laughs> like pretty you you were spinning your your wheels really hard uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Using, I'm using all these like <laughs> double meaning terms you weren't spinning your wheels talking in conversation I usually say spinning the wheels to like uh, no, yeah, I get it. meaning conversation yeah, yeah. going nowhere I don't give no a you we're just saying yeah, it's cool you moved your home. You moved the chair really quickly, came up yeah. on her pretty strong. She saw you coming from like, you know, a few feet away or whatever. You yeah. locked eye contact, and then yeah. did, you want to just like explain like from what you remember like, and I'll show the I'll show the corresponding video as you're explaining. So you you opened, was she receptive at first? Yeah, I think she was pretty receptive. Like, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I most, opened, of the, most, like... of, most of the girls you opened would would lock in because they'd have yeah. to lean down to hear you. Yeah, so that's an advantage. Mm -hmm. From a proximic point of view, they have to come to you, so you know, escalating is easier. So it's actually an advantage. And then how, how did that interaction had, like, go? Uh, so I think I opened with just I want to meet you real quick, forced time constraint, and then just cemented my value. So I said something like, "Oh, I was in LA or whatever." I can't remember what I said exactly. I wasn't trying to be too fancy. I think that was a problem with some of the sets. But basically, I cemented some value, and then basically, she was. I think she was drunk anyway, so <laughs> so she was a little more receptive, and she. So then I isolated her to the bar. Well, no, no before and, that, um, I, I'm I'm thinking back. I can remember the clip. Like, you you got her number. Yeah. Under what pre? Like, well, how did you frame? Because we don't have oh. the audio from the infield. It was yeah. I was recording with my phone. Oh. Like what? Under what uh, frame did you get the number close? I think the frame was just overcoming later because we wasn't gonna invite her to Platinum Lace. The strip club. Oh, yeah. He didn't come in the end. <laughs> I think because he went to the strip club. Yeah, but I think so, that yeah. was the the uh, the basis of the number was over the strip club. Okay. So going to. We'll, the... we'll meet up later in the night, and then. I think I did a double double frame actually. So I done that, and if not, go over the drinks. So. Yeah. During the week. Yeah. And then, I remember like there was two separate occasions where you grabbed her tits. Like how did that? I remember you were, when you were talking to her. You can see on the infield, and I'll show on the yeah, video. Yeah. When you were talking to her, she was kind of like looking down at her tits, and you were kind of mm, pointing at them. That's and, yeah. and then you reached in and grabbed it. It got like blocked. Someone was walking in front, so you don't see it the first time that much. And then the second time, you see you to do it again. So how how are you doing that? <laughs> well, I saw her eye contact. I saw that she was really receptive, so I thought it was, you know, go time, so to speak. And I used your um, I used your thing of the CCs. So I mentioned, I said, "Oh, have you got fake tits?" I think she said they were real, actually. But I said, you know. I was saying like under the muscle CC is like you were saying I can't remember exactly, like and then that was just yeah, and then that was just the opportunity for me to go for it. Really. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I love playing that game with chicks that have fake tits. Where when we were in we were in Vegas at Cabana and there was a what she a New Zealander chick blonde with fake she had just gotten fake tits. She goes yeah. if you she goes if you guess the exact size, yeah. I'll let you I'll let you feel them up, and I looked closely. Like a mm. fucking Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I was like under the muscle, high profile silicone. Yeah. I was like 450 cc. All that was like the easy part. And then I was like, it looked like, it looked like, you know how after D there's like fucking, there's E and F. It looked like it was, uh, what's, what's, how did I, I had to let, you have to adjust if it looks like they have like a pretty tight thing on. Like they, they looked like double D's. The way they were sitting, but she had the yeah. top tied extra tight. Oh. So I went on a little limb and I said triple D, and she was like, because like a lot of guys don't even know there's a triple D. Yeah. Yeah. I used to I used to have a girlfriend with triple D's. This, this webcam chick that I met at the uh, AVN, and I I go triple D, and she's like, no one guesses the triple D part. And so then she was like in the back of the cabana, I'm like fucking grabbing her titties yeah. up. Just but, because of the emotional spike from it as well, probably. I mean, it's it's like a fun game, it, and it's, it's hard to guess exactly. You usually I get pretty close, but. Since mm. I guess exactly, she was like, "Yeah, you're good." Um, my... but yeah, I think your girl did have fake tits the, in the I video. I think so. She, really she said that obvious. she didn't. I think she was lying. But I was like, the way they sit. Well, I grabbed them anyway, so I wanted to. Well, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And I saw the second time she was kind of like, "No, no, like." Yeah. She... yeah. 
No, see, like I think she regains con not conscious, but like she's like, oh shit, people look at. Oh so, yeah, yeah. But see, yeah. So here's it's cool. Like, uh, so so that's why I tried to isolate to the bar. So you, so but, here you well hold on here you have never approached before or you've only approached a few times yeah. and now you're grabbing a hot chick's tip. Never with this aggression, like you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had a, we had a, a student a client that was um, a virgin in Miami, mm -hmm. and he he had never cold approached before. Similar, mm -hmm. it's like almost yours. Like a few is like almost like never approaching. Yeah, and uh, he well, never approached. I used to do like a beta once, but never. Yeah. And he, and he know, told the chick. Man. He told the chick like really early on in set like you have a perfect <coughs> face for coming all over, and she's like she's like what did you say and and she's okay. like uh, that would taste bad or something and he goes not not my, not the way I do it or you know what she she says something like oh I wouldn't like that and he's like you'd like the way I do it or something like that here's a guy that's like never approached never been sexual yeah and then and he's just uh, he and then he like, he was kind of fumbling around in the set like he told the chick he was a scientist he was trying to kind of copy the DJ thing he's not a scientist. But like the chick was like, "Oh, that's cool," and he's like, "Yeah, I have like a, a lab and all this shit." And she's and she's like, "Do you ever fuck people in your lab?" And she's saying shit like that because he had turned it sexual. And he's like, yeah. "Oh yeah, all the time." And then he was leading her out by the hand. He was pulling the chick, and a friend came out of the bathroom and like ran up and cock walked at the end. But like, yeah. it's really cool because like here, both of you had really never approached. You hadn't slept mm -hmm. with the chick yet. Mm -hmm. And you pull, you pulled the stripper, and he pulled. He, I basically count that as it, you know, pull. I mean, he had the. It's like if you were. Yeah. You know, if you're about to win a hand in the end zone, but you if yeah, if you're about to win a, a hand in poker and someone came and like flipped the yeah. table over, like you still did, you still did yeah. shit right. And it's, yeah. I mean, both of those are pretty over the top. Like you guys went from never being sexual to like he's saying, "I'm gonna come all over your face," and you, and you're saying, uh, or you're just grabbing titties. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and we had we had another yeah. student that was like he was trying to copy when I tell him like, "Oh, the kiss wasn't good enough." Mm -hmm. The other Stefan, he like he he was making out the chick, and she's like, "How is my kissing?" And he's like, "It fucking sucks." <laughs> no. like, like all three of those, all three of those situations are going yeah. like pretty extreme, but it's good yeah. to be moving at least more towards the positive direction to be yeah. sexual. So definitely, definitely be te teasing them and shit. Um, okay, so well, I, I didn't just go from nowhere. I mean, I saw her that she was receptive. I didn't just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, rape her or some shit. So. And then, okay, so then what happened? Like, how did you do the isolation? But I, for That's those who well, you're watching, that means like moving them away from the friends to another part of the venue. So you moved her to the bar. Yeah. So, so basically, I isolated her because she was, I think, when she didn't want me to touch her again, I saw it as an opportunity to me to isolate because I could see she was down, but maybe like other people, like, you know I mean, distractions were bothering her, like getting slot shamed or something like that. So I um said, it's time to isolate. I said, you want to get a drink or something like that? So then she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we did that, but I should have, when I, then I tried to get her to leave, but I probably should have waited a bit longer. Cause what I did was she said, want to go for a cigarette? And because I don't smoke, my inclination was to say no, but I should have said yes, cause it would have been an yeah, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't thinking that. So. Yeah, yeah, you should, yeah, that's okay. Then. Yeah, we had other guys make mistakes at the end of the program too, yeah. where we had a student that was about to pull and, the, and the, he brought her to the bar and she, all he had to do was like get her a drink. Not like, yeah, she's like, no, it's, not yeah. like she, it's not like she was gold digging, but he brought her to the bar to get a drink and then he's like, oh, I don't want to be a provider. I don't want to pay for the girl. Mm. And then the chick was like, like the bartender's like, who's paying? And the guy's like, I'm not paying. And yeah. it, just, it just blew it out. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, you, normally you want to try to move them close to the exit or, or um, outside the venue if you well, can. She said about a cigarette, but I said no because obviously I don't smoke, but I should have thought more advanced yeah yeah but, yeah yeah um cool yeah and <laughs> you had i was looking at some of your texts like like you started fucking you matched with this super hot chick on tinder and you were texting her like she ignored a couple messages and you were like what did you say <laughs> what did you say to her <laughs> don't fucking ignore me it's all bullshit <laughs> I was like, don't fucking ignore me you're like yeah don't fucking pull that shit again all right you understand yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like hardcore like i wouldn't I, I wouldn't even text yeah. like that it didn't work in the end, but yeah, she was like eight five, but she was wasting my time to be fair. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it didn't go nowhere, enough, but she was nice to me. <laughs> but that's why yeah. I went for that. I was just like, I'm not gonna take this shit. So yeah. Do you have any other? Was... Do you have anything else to say on that? On that one, I'm gonna show the infield clip on, or is that pretty much sum it sum it up? Mm. I can try and think what. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should start smoking. That's about it, really. You know. <laughs> no, I mean you can. I isolated tons of times. Like in San Diego, they had a smoking section right next to the cabs out, outside of most venues. 
And I'd always say to the girl, like, hey, come meet my friends in the smoking section. I have a really cool friend in the smoking section. And mm. we get there, and then I'm like, oh, I'm not sure we went. Anyways, and then you just continue the conversation there. And then you're like, hey, we should just jump in this cab right here. The cab's, like, right next to you. I'm like, we mm. I live really close. We'll be right back. All my friends, no, we'll come right back. It's cool. And it's, like, a much easier sell because you baby stepped it to the... Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good point as well. When you've... when you uh in in the uh interaction when you're talking about how it's little micro managed steps it's easier for them to say yes mm-hmm. with yeah, yeah, little like, compliance little compliance yeah, so steps. instead of like going from here to the big ask here whether it be trying to be physical like extremely physical or trying to get her to leave or anything it's mm-hmm. much better to get them increased mm-hmm. along the way so it's it's like by the time you get home with them like you've you've talked sexual you've escalated physically somewhat you've made out most likely so then when you go to have sex it's just the next little piece Mm-hmm. Lots of guys, they're doing, they're like staying down in here, and then they get home with the girl. A lot of them don't know even, you don't even get to that point. But then they get home with the girl, and they try to go like this is sex, and that's where the last minute resistance to LMR stuff comes from. Mm-hmm. If you if you're playing things properly and it's like a smooth escalation and and yeah. uh, dance the whole way through, then yeah. it's it's you're, it's going to close almost every time unless she's super yeah. traditional. Um, mm-hmm. What about real quick? Because I don't want this to be like super long, but real quick, let's talk about uh, uh, the the, stri- the stripper pull. <laughs> Sure. Well, I don't know, this sounds weird, man. I was weird one. I don't know. So this wasn't so this wasn't from the strip club. This was basically no, no, like outside. basically outside. Yeah, yeah, this was on the on the street, like we had we had uh we got there late. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you were mm-hmm. you were like about to get an Uber home. Mm-hmm. And, and you go ahead, I'll let you tell the story. So I was just about to get an Uber home basically. And then um I saw her. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to approach because of the mindset. And I was in the mood, so I was like, fuck it, I'm going to approach. Saw her, like, she was, like, running down the thing. So I saw her, you know, open normally, like, got the log- logistics and that. Um, everything else. Started vibing for a bit. And then um, basically got a cab back to hers. And then well, I was, like, kissing her. You, you, she- you said she was, like, look- <laughs> she was, like, looking at you, like, kind of like it was on or some shit you were saying yeah yeah she was a green apple as you know yeah yeah we talked about on the, to this on, on the program like the green apple like it's mystery talks about it's like broken into thirds and i just put out a video about this last week um yeah, about sure. don't expect every girl to like you but it's like um there's i think it's called you can't win them all if you want to check that video out but you have like a third that are going to be really receptive a third that are going to be really unreceptive and then those in between where you kind of have to convey value but this this was a chick that was kind of like giving yeah. you giving you interest yeah I, I, I mean i just said like one thing and then i was like do you want to come back to mine and she was like no and i was like let me come back to yours or whatever and then she was like oh yeah straight away so yeah, yeah. and then i was smoking in my cabin and shit and she was like oh you're so nice and she's like videoing me and shit so yeah it was good man <laughs> I didn't close in the end, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, but that's that's like a huge <laughs> that's a huge step, like to yeah, be yeah. like you, you were having you were having a lot of trouble with approaching and with with approach anxiety, and now you're mm. getting a bunch of numbers. You're able to sexualize yeah. things. You're able to isolate. You're able to pull. Mm. So now it's just it's just a matter of executing and working on your next. There's also yeah. coming. And you're yeah. saying you're saying I'm a big role model for you, and you want to be just like me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to get like, to a thousand, yeah. I was just like, no, like mini don't, John. don't don't go down the dark side. Yeah, and now you stop fucking drinking. I don't like it anymore. Yeah, yeah I actually I ran the whole sober. London I ran the whole London program sober, and it, you kept trying yeah. to get me to drink, and I was like, no, no, no. You're a good boy, now, Yeah, it's no good. But yeah, did you have any other any other closing thoughts? Um, I just thought I thought this was a really good example. Like, like maybe give some like no, final, final words to guys that are like saying they're not good enough because of their race or their height or their accent or whatever it may be. Like, what do you have to say to those? Really, guys? to be simple, like you just got to stop being pussy about it. Really, you can yeah. just do it. You know what I mean, like, there's no other option. There's no, especially when you say about it, you know, hundred hundred doesn't matter about any other variable. You are the man. That's it. So there's no other choice other than to just do it. Yeah. And your your um program is the best platform for that. There's no other program that's better than that. And I'm not just saying that. Yeah, thanks, man. But it's you were is. you were saying like you were ready to give up on cold approach and just like yeah, be ready to be ready to like never fucking yeah. get laid. Yeah. You're just ready to give up. And now like tell guys like how like now you're saying now you're telling guys like don't be a pussy and you're like yeah. forcing you're forcing yourself to go in. So like yeah. Tell tell guys how kind of like liberating 
that is to to kind of go over to the other side. Well, it's it's like having a superpower, really. You know, what I mean, you you know, you have the ability to to get any type of girl. Not any girl, obviously, but any type. You can just go in. I mean, I was doing a day game approaches the other day, and I was getting consistent numbers. I got one enough for like a eight five. We haven't meet up. We haven't meet up yet. But I was like completely sober, and like it didn't even affect me. Because yeah. it's just like a switch. Yep. Like you said, that three second rule, you have to go in straight away. I would say even quicker, like even as soon as you can. So you don't, because as soon as you think about it, it lingers and it gets worse and worse and worse. It doesn't fade. It won't subside because it's in your brain. So you have to sort of just. Like, I don't even notice it. I don't, like, I literally see if they're like attractive enough and if they are going. I don't even uh, conceptualize, you know, where I should go in my feelings. Or anything like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's. I mean, everybody goes through that that fear and the, and the being scared. But once you once you kind of just commit mm. to commit to fucking handling it, or yeah. commit to commit to like forcing yourself to doing it, and, and you were already seeing results immediately after that. You start getting numbers. You start getting yeah. physicality, and yeah. you're like, wow. If I stop pushing out, like I'm gonna have all, all the time, yeah. results. I mean, I've only had like I've only had like one girl, and it was in the daytime. Was like. No, go away. I was like, what the fuck? I was Red like, apple. one go. Yeah. Red apple. So, and it, wasn't, like, oh, really? it, wasn't the end, it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. I was just confused. I was like, what the fuck? But yeah, you realize like, it doesn't matter. You just go on to the next girl and she was like, really receptive. Because it's like, um, it's it's not, um, the weird thing is like, I can't explain it. Like, there's no relationship between one girl and the other girl. Even if like, the other girl was uglier, like less less attractive. And she wasn't receptive, but the hot one was like it's strange. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I can't explain what I'm trying to say, yeah. but it's just strange. No, I mean, strange. yeah, you're yeah. basically the, the fun part about this whole game and pickup thing. I've fucking have just been immersed in it nonstop for like mm. 15. I always say over a decade, but really, I was I was going out since I was like 20, and I'm 35. That's been like 15 years. The fun the fun thing is is like finding the ones that are cool and that you have good chemistry with. So mm-hmm. when you find, when you have good chemistry with a hot cool one and she's not being bitchy to you or not playing games with you then you bring her into your life and, and you keep her around if if a chick no matter how hot or how average is like playing a bunch of games or being an asshole I, mm-hmm. i'm just very quick now i don't even waste any time i don't i used to like if they're really hot i used to like yeah okay well she's really hot i'm gonna put up with this shit and now mm-hmm. even the really hot the really hot ones i'm like i'm like all right you fucked it up like yeah, take care or whatever it. and then they're like uh, me- like no guy's ever said that to me, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. And then, and then they'll, a lot of times they'll like chill out after that too, because they're like, yeah. wow, this guy told me to fuck off. Yeah, never done that, never used to it, and now they've you flip the script in the um, the roles. But the thing is, I think you can't really fake abundance as well. So obviously you've reached that level where you are abundant both in mentality and in you know the physical mm-hmm. physical world. So I think if that makes sense, I don't know. But yeah. It's mad. I really would suggest doing it. If you don't do it, you're gonna be regretting it. Cause there's no other better program. Oh, it's take my take my live program. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm I'm running these all over the globe now. So, so for you, those of you guys that are watching, I have coaches that can run the West Coast, the United States. Like these are like the, some of the best guys in the game that have lots of experience coaching. West Coast USA, East Coast USA, uh, Toronto and Montreal and Canada, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Beijing, uh, <coughs> Seoul, South Korea. Like, I, I have guys that can run in, in Japan, and China, and South Korea. I have guys from Australia. Um, I have guys that can travel to South America. If, you, if anybody's watching from South America, I'm running Europe myself. Uh, mostly having guys come to Warsaw. Um, I might be coming to London. Actually, I just got a guy interested in a 10-day for London. I might be coming back. You can you can show with us. Uh, yeah, that's but yeah, I mean, basically, if, if you if anybody's interested in watching this, I can teach you. Huh? <laughs> I can teach him. Uh, Paul Jenko wants to meet up too. Uh, he was gonna meet up with me when I was. Does there, he? So yeah, the, day game legend. Yeah. Yeah, he was gonna meet. He was gonna, stuff, we were gonna do a program or a video in person, and he had like his wife's family was in town for that whole weekend. Mm-hmm. But next time I come to town, we're gonna we're gonna get on yeah, camera. He's really again. solid as well, and his um metrics are the same, like ten percent. Oh yeah. Range. Yep. It's nice to so hear information like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, it sounds really low, and most coaches will never admit that, or advanced guys will never admit that. But I always tell guys real stats. I'm like, you're probably gonna get flakes from like half your night game numbers. Like, yeah. Nope. You're only gonna you're only gonna close like one to two leads per week out of like getting acquiring forty. But then you got RSD running around being like, 
like Owen says he wakes up to like 20 date requests on Instagram and, and he says he's up banging to like 7 or 8 a.m. every night. It's just bullshit. It's just <laughs> yeah. not, you know, it's yeah, not. Yeah. And they never get flakes yeah. and like all this stuff. And I know, I know people that know him and he's like going to bed early and like fucking hanging out with dudes and shit. Yeah. No, but it's not, even if you were like the most like the best guy ever, you still get flaked because a lot of yeah. them are yeah, it's exact, exactly. There's variables that you cannot control. That's, that's part of the game. And once you, the sooner you come to terms with that, and I tell guys, like, the best cold callers in sales are the best door-to-door mm-hmm. salesmen. There's just tons of people that aren't interested. They don't want to hear your pitch. They shut the door in your face. They hang up the phone. Who gives a shit? It's part of the game. It's what makes it fun. If every girl was super yeah. receptive, that would be that would be kind of cool at first, but then it would lose yeah. it lose its appeal because it would just become yeah. too boring. Like, you got to you gotta have that unpredictability mixed in. That's what makes it so fun because you, you have to basically – you, you apply your skill to the ones well, that are that are into hearing it and then you get them into your life and it, it's cool yeah we well, can do rotations as well so you don't need as much volume so yeah yeah so your until your rotation becomes unmanageable I, I just added like five or six new ones on it's like fucking mm, well, I, cut, I, I cut out a bunch though too mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yeah so Great. Yeah, so we'll, we'll wrap up here. Imagine um, doing that. All right, cool. <laughs> it was good though, yeah? You got everything you wanted, yeah? I didn't fuck up. Yeah. No, it's cool. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. you coming on. Um, <laughs> John Anthony Lifestyle at gmail.com. Uh, for those of you that are interested in, in signing up for live programs, um, we, there are 10-day, 7-day, and 3-day options. Uh, I'm going to be running some 10 days this summer. And... If you basically to go over pricing and details and schedules, just shoot me an email and we can coordinate. I actually had some dudes hit me up recently that were like, I've always wanted to take a program with you for years, but I didn't see you announce a tour date to my city. And I'm like, dude, like like for any of you that, that like can't travel to a major city and you want to do it in your city, just email me and, and either I'll be able to work something out where I come or, or I can send a top coach. But just put it out there. Send, send me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have uh Dude, I was just, I was I was watching Family Guy yesterday, and they have the episode with Joe where they're try, you know the the handicapped dude on Family Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had like a horse, and they tied his legs around the back of the horse's neck. Yeah. Have you seen that episode? Uh, I don't think I've seen that episode. <laughs> it's unfamiliar. familiar though. It's not familiar. They like try, that they like try, and they like put a a hood over the back of the horse so that the it was looking at like the horse's legs where it is. But then the horse started like freaking <laughs> out, and they tried to like shoot it with a shotgun. I don't know, it was out of out of wow. control. Wow. <laughs> um yeah no it'd be cool if, if one day you could get like uh prosthetic legs or some shit and fucking yeah, well not well it's the brain in it so it's not neuro well there's got to so be, be different technology will solve it someday i think no but we discussed it in um didn't you get the research from poland yeah, yeah they're still looking into it about putting a kind of implant in that can yeah communicate with like, bionic legs but yeah that'd be cool if you could fucking your webcam's all like fizzed out by the way it's all like bad quality now really yeah. it looks fine on my end um oh. all right yeah, yeah thanks so much um just smart, it? yeah do you want me to put well i guess if, if anybody like wants to speak to anthony more about his experience you can email me and i'll, yeah. I'll uh relay the, the oh, they can put me on the instagram if you want follow me oh, on okay. instagram. what's your oh. instagram uh, it's A B sourcing, so A B S A U C I N. Yeah. Good. Okay. Oh yeah, we can put that on the screen and we'll put it in the description. Um but yeah, thanks again. Make sure you guys like and subscribe below uh to receive updates. Make sure you press the bell button to receive updates about my new videos Sunday through Thursday each week. And thank you, Anthony. And uh Sorry. we'll check back we'll check time. back in we'll check back in with you like in two to three months and see yeah, see how much hundred count. <laughs> yeah, they won't right, be able man. to. Huh? They don't have to use my wheelchair. That's what I always say. Wheelchair? They'll have to use my wheelchair. That's what I always say. They will have to use it at the end because they won't be able to walk when I'm finished. That's my joke. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you say. Yeah, you got some funny shit like. Yeah, love to use your wheelchair because they won't be able to walk after you're done. You said on Tinder in your Tinder bio, tell tell them what it says in your Tinder bio. Um, what does it say? Oh, it says um something like, "Calgo is my favorite position, but the wheelchair is just because you really I'm just lazy." Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I was telling them just like own that shit, like yeah, be like, hey, like my dick works. Don't worry, like 
I don't yeah, even have to yeah. get up. You can just fuck me anywhere. In I mean, it did help because I was talking to the blonde girl. She was like, oh, thanks for being, like, you know, telling the fucking... Because, to be fair, they don't know, do they? So, you know, uh, you can't um, you can't be annoyed at their ignorance. So you got to oh, yeah, because you, you don't show it on Tinder. I would, I would show it. I mean... No, I do. I do sometimes, but I'm getting my pictures done next week. Oh, nice. So okay. I'm yeah, that, that'll, that'll help a lot. Well, yeah, that's... Send them to me. I'll, send them to me. I'll have Hot Girls review, pick the order, and the best picture. All right, cool. cool. All right, thanks again, man. Um, I will All talk right. soon. I'll let you know and come to London. I'm like an hour late for this chick's house. She's gonna yell, yell at me probably again. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Take care, right. man. We'll talk Take soon. Take care, man. All right, so. Do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active, while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.